Okay, so here we are. I'm going to barbecue. We've got these one inch T bones. Unbelievable. But uh, for now, I'm going to get the coals going. Um, so I use a chimney. I don't use fuel because fuel can actually flavor your food. You don't want that. So I use this charcoal chimney. And uh, really simply, I just put uh, newspaper in the bottom here. And then I flip it over and fill it with coal, light the bottom, and in about 15 minutes you got blazing red coals that you can cook with. And there's again no fuel required. So I'll just set that up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've stuffed the, uh, the bottom of the chimney with newspaper. I just twist it up and stuff it in there. Okay. So now, I'm going to turn it over, just like that, and fill it with charcoal, and light her up. Be right back. Okay, oh, I'm going to get my hand off the lens. Alright, so I'm back, and here we are. I'm just going to light this guy, and, <clears throat> excuse me, just like that, and that's all you need. You see the smoke that's going to come pouring out of this thing in a second. Once all that newspaper gets uh, gets going. It's going to look like a, an old steam engine train. Choo choo. I think it works on uh, like a cyclonic um, air thing where the air gets sucked in through the bottom and uh, you know does this big circle circular air flow and it and it just gets the coals going really well whoever come up with this idea was brilliant <laughs> look at that Whoa. pretty cool Okay, so enough of that. Um, when the coals are nice and red, I'll, I'll film that. Be right back. Okay. Okay, I've come back out. Um, these are the steaks. Oops. Right here, look at that. These guys are about one inch thick. They're about 22 ounces each. My wife asked, I asked my wife, uh, what do you want for dinner? She's real quick said steak so I said okay we're gonna eat steak then and I'm gonna use this guy too because I want to make sure her she needs hers well done mine gets medium rare so I want to make sure that she gets her well done it's a sin almost but that's what you do for love so anyway see that look at that amazing it's like a blast furnace in there crazy red coals so we'll let that go a few more minutes, and uh, then we'll get them poured into the, yeah. That's so it's just a bit of old coals from last night, barbecuing. But and some people say don't ever use those coals. I don't have a problem with it. I've tried both ways, and it doesn't change the flavor or anything else. So we will just add a little more fuel to the fire. Okay. Okay, I'm... Um, I'm going to pour the coals now, even though there's some on top, as you can see, that are not bright red or whatever. I don't need them all bright red, because I, I, I actually, I'm going to need about half an hour to cook that steak for my wife. So um, I'll pour it now, and it'll actually slow down the burn a bit by not having them all bright red. So this is how we do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna stick this here. It'll 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 burn out by itself. It's just a piece of paper stuck in there. Okay. So now put the grate on. Get it sort of cleaned up a bit. And I'm gonna end up finishing her steak. Actually, both our steaks off in a cast iron. 
um, frying pan with butter. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Got my cast iron here, as you can see. Butter, tongs, and then we're gonna put the steaks on there. Mm. Okay, let's do this a little clean up. Sorry about the not pointing the camera at the right spot. Alright, that's good. Now, take the steak. Okay. So I'm just going to sear it on both sides and then move it to this side. So, when you do charcoal cooking, well, I only ever put the charcoals in one half of the barbecue so you can give more control because there's lots of heat here too it's just not direct heat so again this is just for searing right now I'll leave that go a little bit and then I'll give it a turn you know, maybe 30, 35 degrees or something like that, just to give it some diamond marks. <laughs> it's really hot, maybe too hot. So. Beautiful piece of meat. Diamonds happening. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. <laughs> Especially a steak eating girl. <laughs> yeah, craziness. Yeah, the frying pan thing, that's that I just do that at the end because the butter adds this nutty flavor to the steak. Gives you more of a steakhouse flavor. here now on this side so as you can see there's no coals under it and uh, I'm gonna put the lid on it and there's lots of airflow so it's not gonna be steam in there because the steam can actually escape through the holes here and having the holes here forces the heat over the steak because this is right over the steak these holes and there's holes in the bottom too underneath the barbecue Last week I drilled a hole in the top of this thing and put this uh, thermometer thermometer on there. It's not, not auto-focusing very well, but anyways, you can see it climb. So anyways, I'll be back. Okay, come back outside. I'm going to have a look at the steak. It's been about, um, I don't know, six or seven minutes since I put it on here. And, uh, Okay, doesn't look a whole lot different. Let's turn her over, have a look. Yep, so we'll just do one of these. Just kind of rotate it in a 180 or something like that. Because obviously the one side is being exposed to the heat. You know, it's October 23rd and it's already getting so dark outside and it's not even late I'm not sure what the exact time is but it's like I don't know six something six thirty or something like that and 
Anyways, this is the backyards. I got so much work to do here, fixing up this shed and that shed over there. There's just so much stuff to do all the time. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll be back in a second. So I'm back out. Um, it's been another five or six minutes, and this is a motion sensor um, floodlight, LED. Anyways, whenever I come to the back door, which is actually in our bedroom, um, and I see the lights on, I know that's been a critter out here. So I thought, oh God, oh, it's nothing's messing with the steak. <laughs> but, um, oh, I remember one time I, I cooked a big pot of uh, curried chicken, and I have to cook it outside because Jackie, uh, my wife, she, she just can't handle the smell. And I don't blame her, it's pretty strong. But anyways, I had the pot on the on the cooking on the um, side burner of the Barbie and it was finished so I just turned it off and but I left the lid just slightly off to the side a bit so it could cool down faster when I come out right underneath was a freaking monster raccoon underneath and it's like he was just gonna sort of reach his hand up like this and try and pull the pot down but of course um, he doesn't want a confrontation either, so he took off, but I think I was like 20 seconds away from having curry all over the deck and just a, a nightmare. So, anyways, um, let's have a look at this guy. It's starting to take shape. Look at that. So, let's, uh, let's turn, I see a little blood... Now I'm going to turn them around here. You can always tell also by the firmness of the... Yeah, that's, this guy's cooking very well. I'm going to use um, this uh, meat thermometer. And uh, unfortunately it won't, it won't focus in for some reason. I don't know. I adjust my settings on the... Um, on the uh, phone. So, yeah, who needs cameras anymore? Eh? Phones do everything. So, she's moving, but we're a long ways off. Yeah, it's still rare. Yeah, see, it's just down at the bottom here. 140 is um, a bit rare beef okay I need to hit about 170 to be well done to make make the wifey happy so all right so we'll just uh, oh, I don't like that anyways we'll uh, cover it up and I'll be back okay back out here again now now we're gonna do cast iron I put some butter in there already so, I'm going to get that all nice and melty, and uh, look at the steak, oh man, doing really well. So I'm just going to cover that up, I'm going to have to get um, an oven mitt to maneuver that pan after, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and as you can see, the, uh, the butter's melting quite nicely, so I'll use the tongs here. Clearly my deck or my barbecue is not level because all the butter is running to one side. <laughs> See, look, pull it up there but it, it flows the, the other way. Beautiful. Okay. Over here, and maybe like that. Yeah, and I'm gonna put mine on too. Okay, 
there's mine. I give Jackie the the steak with the big the bigger fillet because it's more tender and she deserves that nice cut more than I deserve it. All right. Yeah. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm gonna flip mine over now. Jackie's, actually, I just flipped hers too in the butter. You hear that? Okay. Okay, I'll pause it and come back. Okay, I'm back. Time to maneuver things around in this barbecue. So my steak's gonna go on the bottom now. And Jackie's will Jackie's will cook, it's just gonna Actually, hers is almost done. So we just want to get mine in, into the pot for a little bit. Just to get it a little bit of that nice nutty butter flavor. Let's put hers on top there. Because I think hers is almost uh, up to temperature. like really hot. Oh. Okay. It's because I had it in there and I, I closed the lid so the whole damn thing got too hot. Anyway, I'm going to close this up for now. And uh, we'll come back out in a sec. Okay, we're back. Here they are. Jackie's mine. Shrooms, asparagus, and rice. I didn't put you on the camera yet. <laughs> Jackie's smirking over there. Got her hand on her face. Come on now, be a sport. No. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh, this is the kitchen. with a little balsamic. This is what I do. Butter and seasoning salt. That's it. And then at the very end, a splash of balsamic. The balsamic cranks up the flavor. And, um, and yeah, it's a little bit sharpness and the, the, the balsamic flavor too, which I love. So, that's it, guys. I'm gonna cut into that in about five or six minutes, and then I'm gonna eat. <laughs> 